I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collar, get your ass over to the Palais Royale now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes. But unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was. The palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes? What is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up. We're on the first floor. Madame Cochon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carson! <laughs> He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe murdered. And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before and written about him. 
The costume killer. At least that's what I called him. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder, and I needed to find them. A Louis XIV table with an antique cloth. The murder had taste, but hey, with a husband that rich taste is easy. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French Ultramarine. A medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. Melda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. She was deep in conversation. She totally ignored me. I thought of leaving, but was sure there was more to find. The door was locked. A bust of Pierre Carchon, humble servant of La France. Pierre Carchon again. His eyes seemed to follow me around the room. A bust of Pierre Cachon. The killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket and took it with him. Pierre Carchon was stiff for the last time. She was I thought of leaving.
just the colour I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favourite colour. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. Excuse me, madame. Yes? Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronize me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Yes. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already, I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. The door was locked. It was the drawing room. Now we were getting... 